It had location, it had parking, it's been there for 30 years, it had a clientele, it had all the things that we thought would be a good start for us. Jim and Michael intended to primarily just be investors, leaving Dan, a retired teacher, to run the day-to-day -day operations. You know, I retired from teaching, uh, but I was young enough to where I didn't want to totally retire. So I'm thinking, you know, I don't know anything about business. I don't know anything about running a bar. I do like to drink beer. And I thought, <laughs> I thought this might be a great thing for me to do, you know, in early retirement. In 2012, cancer research co-workers Jonathan and John bought the iconic Tarzana rock venue, Paladino's. I bought Paladino's to try to improve my quality of life. <laughs> For my day job, I am a biochemist. We can't make boxes. When I was in graduate school, I lived two blocks up the street. I used to be here a couple of times a week, and then when the opportunity presented itself, it was, that sounds like fun, we should do that. I on some patents, I published first author papers, and I've witnessed clinical trials that actually help save people's lives. We wanted to make this kind of a community-based art, music, place for people to hang out. There was a point in time when you would have bands playing every single night of the week. The Foo Fighters played here more than once, and, and they did their uh, music video here. But the scientists discovered that this once thriving music venue no longer attracted the crowds of the past. When we bought the bar, business at Paladino's was not good. I didn't know that. But it was a very different bar from what I remembered. Right now, we're losing $150 every Monday night. I think LA music is hard to do, but, but I, think this, I think this place might be a little bit of a has-been, and then over time, they just stop coming, and we don't have new people coming in. We've tried a world of things here. I mean, we've tried tiki combined with, you know, black light art. We've tried to do the sports bar. None of it works. And these guys have spent their entire life studying science, not the bar business. It would be a, a really cool idea is if we were to have like little like Nippa Hut booths, you know, and then it, you but know what I mean? Like, I don't, so, know, I don't know what so, Nippa Hut is. You know, we've had complaints on the cooler. There's Mary. She's one of our bartenders. So I'm putting them on, on ice for them. Oh, that's good thinking. So the beer is too warm. It's now in a pitcher with ice. <laughs> and now you're going to pick it up and it's going to drip all over. There's Wolfie in the sunglasses. Thanks for coming in. It's almost disrespectful that he's wearing no shades, isn't it? Look at me. I'm a rock star behind the bar. That's his attitude, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You want me to start your tap? Okay. And there's Leah. She's another bartender. We have pizza if you guys like pizza. Did you like one? Yeah. Okay. I'll put it in for you. So this is our kitchen. Uh, Looks like it. I'm making a pizza. Store-bought frozen pizza, not even food service. So they're using the slide draw pizza oven. I brought cheese, chicken, and supreme. I got a friend of mine, Julian Douglas, to come in and do recon. Julian is a very successful concert promoter. So he understands what makes live music venues work. So I really thought that he could provide us with some great insight tonight. What would you guys like? You guys got any special cocktails tonight? Um, no, actually, there's no special cocktails tonight. I love it. All right, well, what kind of draft beer do you guys got? Unfortunately, right now, our draft is out. So we're going to have bottles. Oh, I see it's been that. out for a couple months. It's a great sign you got coming. Yeah. How about a Manhattan? What? What? Do I have the ingredients for that? So they struck out. No signature cocktails, no beer. He's looking up the drinks. How about a, you can't make a Manhattan? How about an old fashioned? We don't have any oranges. This guy is yet to say yes. But he didn't forget his shades. Daddy made sure he had. I'll tell you, why do you make me the drink that you would drink? See, I'm more of a tequila person. Like, I like tequila and Tabasco. Like, it's sweet and spicy. I'll try it. Yeah. Sweet. My arm candy. It is my first drink I've ever made. But this drink, it's way too sweet for me. You guys got any uh, any food? We do. We have pizzas. Hey. There's three in a room right now. There's Where? one this in right now. There's food. three after that. And then, okay. So it'll be about 45 minutes. What? I like the idea of having a monthly uh, art opening. Well, These two kidding. geniuses are never here. And when they do show up, they're not even addressing the problems at the bar or the kitchen. we will turn into a yoga studio. Or karate. <laughs> okay, the pizza is now out, and it's been 15 minutes. Um, who had the first pepperoni pizza? 
my God, she's <laughs> announcing it. If I had the third, I'd be raising my hand right now. I want that pizza. <laughs> It's a band tonight. Band can't fill the house. No. 75 for, for the band, 75 for the sound. So it's 150 on top of the fact that it's a negative, yeah. In a venue of this size, either a band is too expensive or they don't draw. They've built this place around music and entertainers, not a bar concept itself. So if there isn't a great act there, why go? Back in the day, they'd have like major bands playing there. But now, honestly, if I got off the metro here and I was walking, I'd be like, what's the Mermaid what's, Strip Club? What's the strip band? <laughs> Who's dancing here tonight? Part of my romantic vision about owning a bar is, you know, having watched Casablanca. I don't know if I'm following you. What are they talking about? People want to hang up their paintings. People want to put their sculptures around. That's what I'm talking about. Who is going to come fill a venue of that size for rookie artists if either of them listens to the other one or themselves they're screwed? So we print up a flyer, bring it down to the community college, put it up there, and hope they call us. Can you watch this anymore? No. They're going to walk out of this office thinking they accomplished something, but they accomplished nothing. I'm not going to let this continue anymore, guys. I'm going to go in and stop it. I have to make them face reality. They're scientists, for Christ's sakes. OK, so how much money are you guys in debt? Five. $500,000. Yeah. So are you here to forward culture or your own retirement? Hopefully both. Both. So are you willing to risk your retirement for the culture? Mm, yeah, no. To only a minor degree. Listen to me, what are you doing? Yeah. Why would you go into this business? I mean, you're a scientist. That's like me putting you in an auto mechanic shop. But, but I mean, I, I do love music and I do love art. You're trying to create a music venue. You cannot get good bands to fill this place 10 days a month, nonetheless more, can you? What? One of the guys that played with him played with Jimi Hendrix and wrote- So what? Yeah, Hendrix right. died years ago. The guys he played with are irrelevant today. You're right. <laughs> they don't You're right. care. You're right. I send in one of the biggest booking agents in Hollywood to sit at your bar with a musician. The first thing they say to him is, we have no draft beer. Let me have a Manhattan. We don't have the ingredients for that. Okay. What? So then he said, okay, I can't get draft beer. I can't get the cocktails I want. Now, if that stuff is going on over there, is there anything you guys are talking about in your office that's going to make a damn bit of difference? You should be smart enough to know that you're sinking. Oh, we, we, we we're aware of that. So the best thing that you can do is stop listening to him. And the best thing that you can do is stop listening to him. Because you're talking about pennies and dimes and $75 sound men. You guys are brilliant scientists but moronic bar owners. Thanks. So what, should we go and talk to the staff? Do you want to talk a bit? I became the lead singer of Judas Priest in 1996, toured the world until 2003. I got their old singer back, and, and I uh, moved on to other bands and other artists and, and toured the world ever since then. In 2012, after many years on the road, Tim decided he needed a change of pace. I've always tried to play this part of keeping the rock image of the guy who does have a movie loosely based off of him in Rockstar. But I wanted to stop touring as much. I want to come home to spend more time with my kids. So he banded together with Micah Poston, a local businessman with a vision of opening a bar. When the local rock star, and he's a real rock star, wants to go into business with me, I was very excited. And when did you open the bar together? Uh, two years ago now. So you put your name in the front of a building. Yes. Which is your equity. Yes. Is there a formal yes. agreement? 60-40, Mike is 60, I'm 40. How's it going? It's uh, not going good. With two years, we would never made a dime. What's not working? Why is this bar failing is a question that uh, I think we both like to know. You're sitting there, your name is on the sign, you're losing money, but you don't know why. Is he generating financials? Uh, you know, uh, I've really just never looked at the numbers, and obviously it's not right, but then shame on you. Shame on me. I understand he's in debt about 200000 is that about right? Probably, yeah. And at some point, he's not gonna fund the losses anymore. 
you wouldn't get on stage without knowing a guy running that board could mix you right, up your performance. Yeah. But you did that exact thing here. I did, yeah. And I know I did. I complain, but I don't do anything about it. So it's kind of where I take the blame for it. I'm sitting here with a guy who has built an incredible name and reputation for yourself. And if this place closes, it's going to have an impact on all that equity and goodwill that you've built up in this town all these years. Yes. This is serious. There's a bartender who worked for you named Alexis. Very nice girl. She left two months ago because she said she wasn't making money. You get the heavy metal customers that come in and don't tip you. <laughs> Honestly, like, <laughs> the way that it looks, people are like, man, this is a hole. Let's see what's going on in here. This is Char. And here is a tall draft for you. So there's Danielle. She's a bartender. Shot! Do you want a shot? I'll try this ocean drive. Okay. Was no income. Like, I literally made nothing. Are you turning over staff because of that? Absolutely. Yeah. Ocean drive? Is that not the most unappealing yeah. cocktail you've ever I don't seen? Know what that is. <laughs> it looks like dirt in here. There you go. That looks like freaking dishwater. Kind of a tea, water, I don't know what it is. You got the Wing Tour shirt on. The World Tour of Wings, that's mine. It's 37 flavors of wings from around the world that came about from all my travels of touring the world. Let me understand this. So, you've eaten wings in all of these places, all these sauces, mm -hmm. and you've tried to take the best ones and bring them here. Yes. It's a cool story. So if you flip to the back, we have like a world wing tour, descent wing, all of these wing flavors. These are all sauces. What we have here is a business that justifies itself with 50 cent wings. Terrible execution. Man, this should be a freaking gold mine. You're not fighting for it, and he doesn't know how to do it. Take a bite of something and it's like, you need it. Yeah. I wonder if, I wonder if like it, the newer the sauce is, or maybe older the sauce is, if the seeds go to the bottom. Thick traditional, Bloody Mary, and cheesy sound check. Yes, great guy. He really, he tried. So what is your food cost? Do you know? I don't know. If you knew that you were losing 30 cents every time you sold a wing for 50 cents, would you sell it for 50 cents? No. Because you are, but you don't know that. And I wonder if Micah knows that. I don't, this annoys me. I don't know what to do about it. When we became partners, I knew he was the business guy. How many rock stars do you know that have had other people manage businesses and money for them that are broke today? Too many. Yeah. Anything else we need, you guys? No, thank you. A little bit weird. They kind of like mac and cheese. The food and wings went down a little bit since we opened. Everything's went down. So I come to your bar for the first time. This is what I see. They're served in baskets with paper. Was that your vision? Originally, I wanted to do them on square, long plates, and they mm -hmm. kind of came out like that. But uh, I was told that didn't put any money up, uh, and that was how we had to do it. Whoa. Fact of the matter is you have a partner in Micah who is not respecting your brand. I'm causing problems, but that's, is that new? When he looks at you and says, no, I'm not going to do it the way you want it, that's not respecting your brand. That's exploiting it. Get angry. Your name is on a sign they ignore you. To accept the premise that his money is worth more than your name is absurd. You have the power. Put it on plates or I'm going to take my sign down. Let's go inside. I want to sit with Micah. And let's hear what he has to say. Okay. The two of you guys started the bar together. Yep. Now you're in a hole 200 ish? Close. About 170. So if things don't turn around, what happens? I go bankrupt. What do you think happens to him? Financially, I don't I don't see him hurting too bad. You realize he makes money on his name. Correct. How do you feel about it? Well, I feel when I'm trying to give a suggestion on what I would like to have happen. It's never looked upon seriously. I have to do what I got to do to get the doors open for the day. So you have another company? Yes. I've taken loans from my landscape company. Do you think you're making money on 50 cent wings? I mean, you're allowing people to walk in and walk out for next to nothing. Right. And you put your name on him. I want to show you guys how stupid you are. Where's one of those tour shirts? 
Come here. Look at that shirt. The word of disappears. World Tour wins 2015. Where the Paul McCartney? The food is served in frickin' baskets. It looks like you're selling drinks that look like dishwater, for Christ's sake. You got a stage that those people sitting in the booths behind the bar can't even see. I got you, who's a wimp, who's not even protecting your own name, and you can't operate. I mean, how more ironic is that? I do feel like Mike is disrespecting my brand and my name. Take a deep breath and get him back. See you tomorrow. OK. I've always been the good guy and too nice at times where I should speak up. I just sometimes take someone other than your spouse or people around you that's still telling you that you're being taken advantage of. Hey, I already knew that was going to happen. Dude, I was going to be the thrown right in your face like that. I think he sees our division. It's just not, we're, we're not executing it. I'm not executing it. Two years, we haven't made a dollar. And you go, well, just close the doors. We got to figure it out. <laughs> I thought you were going to punch me. In 2008, Ramiro Flores, a local Tucson area defense attorney, chose to invest some of his life savings and became co-owner of the original hideout. I was looking to invest in something where I didn't have to work it every single day. And then in the future, be able to work less as an attorney. If I need to, I'll come and work every month weekend. I mean, the only experience that I had was coming into bars and having drinks. A year after getting involved with the business, Ramiro bought out his partner, a bold move having literally no previous bar experience to speak of. Raul's terrible. When he's in a bad mood, everybody gets it. He had about as much industry experience as me, which is none. Can I get you something to drink? Yeah, can we get a draft beer? We have no draft beer, I'm sorry. Do you guys have a cocktail menu? Um, fortunately, it is we don't have a cocktail menu, in there, but. Um, you know what? We don't have the mango mix for the mango margarita. Okay. We don't have that. So they didn't have the drinks you wanted? Mm -hmm. Missing ingredients, just for what sounds like a variation off a margarita? Or just, just a margarita. Just a regular margarita? Yeah. Uh, Michelana. Okay. And I'll try a tequila. Tequila sunrise. OK, ladies. OK, well, she was nice. She was nice. Mm -hmm. Tried no to accommodate. Idea, no idea. She tried to accommodate. Is that, is that chicken on the? Trash can? I think he has chicken just sitting on the trash can. Wow. There's raw and cooked food everywhere. Oh, raw chicken right now in the sink. That's your dish sink. That's your dish sink. And she's rinsing the chicken. OK, now let's see what she does with her hands after this. It's dripping right on the table. Yeah. So if our room is here 12, 14 hours a day, what the hell is he doing? It's not training him. This is the slowest Mother's Day we've had ever, child, since I've been here in 10 years. And we can't do our job. He's not cleaning the kitchen. He's not organizing the kitchen. He's not cleaning the kitchen. What the hell does this guy do all day? You have a lot of nerve, ma'am. You have a lot of nerve, ma'am. Now that wet chicken is going in the fryer. Yeah, and wait till you see this fryer. Look at this foam or frog. Look at that. Look at the foam. Oh, my god. I've never seen it that good, ever. I've never. That tells me the bottom of the fryer is not being cleaned. So all that stuff is kind of floating to the top. It's gross. So if you were Ramiro and put up 300 grand and was losing $6,000 a month, and that's the way Raul cleaned your kitchen, would you be OK with that, chef? Not at all. He'd be out. He'd be out the back door. Look at this, chef. Chef, can they serve that food? They cannot serve that food, John. They can't serve any of it. No, we can't let them get that. Let's go in together. You shut the bar down, because they can't serve drinks. Shut the kitchen down. I'll go for the owners. You got it. You can't serve this food, man. Look at you can't let stuff sit in here. This is disgusting, guys. You got to shut this place down. There are some things that need to be cleaned, but at the same time, we don't have proper cleaning facilities to clean any of this. So when you opened this bar, what was the deal with your brother? The deal was. You know, he was going to run it. He's going to be the nuts and bolts guy. You know, I was going to help with the, the business end. How'd that work out? Well, it's not working out good. That's why you're here. How much money you got in this place? About 300000 300000 How much money does he have in it? None. So uh, your brother it does, it doesn't respect your money, or he's an idiot? I think he respects my money, and I don't think he's an idiot. So is he lazy? No, absolutely not. It's not working. Really? So did you change this oil? Look at the color of these, Chef. Is that right? 
No. So, look at that oil. Can any of this be right with that oil? No. So all of it is freaking wrong. That's disrespectful, man. You did as disrespectful to your customers. I'm, I'm trying to do what I can do. You're going to get I'm, somebody I'm, I'm, sick. I'm one guy in here trying to do what I can do. So are you they're a saying, wimp? Saying, are you an idiot? Saying, are you lazy? They're saying I'm too what hard. exactly are they're you? I'm too hard on these people. I'm trying to do the best I can do, the best I know how to do. And yeah, we're f***ing up tonight. So the best you can do sucks. You know, when you were prison guard, you protected people, didn't you? Yes, sir. Your job was to keep the population safe, correct? Yes, sir. Did you keep them safe tonight? No, sir. Yeah, blew it. Retired Major League Baseball pitcher Dan Serafino opened up the bullpen bar. I started playing professional baseball when I was 18. I played with about 13 teams in the United States, and then I played four years in Japan. It's pretty much a kid's dream. Desperate for a new career after losing his $14 million fortune through a series of bad investments and a bitter divorce settlement, Dan convinced his parents to take out a $240,000 loan against their house to buy a bar. When I first opened the bar, it was unbelievable. We were packed every night, doing about forty-five dollars to fifty thousand dollars a month in sales. It was awesome. Sam, Pam, how are you? To handle the high volume of customers, Dan hired trusted family friends Winter and Tara, who also live with Dan and his wife. You guys sure are bubbly this morning. Kind of come as a package deal. We live together. We work together. We finish each other sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Riding high off his early success, Dan stepped away from running the bar's day-to-day -day operations to devote more time to his new wife, Erin. When Dan started not showing up as much, the girls got rowdier, and Dan let things go a little bit. I've been drinking all day, but I am so ready to bartend. <laughs> It's like one big party. <laughs> like, every day we get to party with the customers and we get to drink with the customers. As the staff continued to party, Dan saw his profits dwindle and now finds himself $300,000 in debt. I don't think my staff respects me at all as a boss. <laughs> it's been a really difficult transition from baseball to being a bar owner. I would drop this bar in a heartbeat if I could go back to playing baseball. What? Do you pretty ladies like? Can I have the tri-tip sandwich, please? I have a ticket for you. Okay, it's gonna be a wait, so. Okay. There's Tom, he's your chef. Slice in your tri-tip on the grill. Obviously when you cut meat, all the juices come out. You can't cook a tri-tip to order. No, a big roast, no. How you doing, dude? I'm doing all right. Girls are forgetting to wash the glasses. I gotta go Thanks wash the glasses real quick. <laughs> all right, a quick smoke before I serve. He's grilling with a cigarette in his mouth. In mouth. Now he's outside by the grill. Technically, that is still the kitchen, even though it's outside. A disrespectful. Now look, he's gotta have a beer with his cigarette. Well, the problem I have now is, is obviously alcohol slows you down. <laughs> Can you believe this? Wow, man. Tom, you wanna take a shot off me? Yes. <laughs> Do something. You wonder why we don't have any glasses? Because they're right here. We got right glasses. Quit tripping over Do your job. I see Dan trying, but he's running around like a chicken with his head cut off. The effort doesn't mean anything if his staff doesn't respect him. I'll do the glasses. Go get a drink, order some drinks, whatever the you do. These girls need to work harder. You don't need to I'm be trying, rushing but I got around. Babysitting, them. too. They're running out of glasses. I've already done three okay, sets. then talk to them. All right. I just came here to have a drink with my wife and hang out. And I ended up working. Again. <laughs> I can't believe what I'm seeing right now, John. <laughs> this is their job, their livelihood, and they're treating it like it's a, it's a playground, man. It's pissing me off. It's a joke. Oh my God, look at that. What the f is she doing right now? Dan is losing 4,500 a month as this is happening, and he's not doing a damn thing about it. Does that seem like a major leaguer to you? It's a major idiot is what it seems like. John, drink. How you doing? You're in the ninth inning, brother. You got nothing left. I should be pulling you. 
I'm not giving up. I'm trying, I'm trying to figure it out. That doesn't mean the... What the hell is going on here? You have no policies, no rules. Exactly. He gives them too many chances. How much did you drink tonight, Jessica? Uh, I don't know. Come here. And blow into this. What does that say? 0.21. So you are drunk yeah. by almost three times. Yeah. So you're busted. I'm busted. This is bullshit. Is he normally like this? This is absurd. And you're the perpetuator of the absurdity. Are you kidding me? No, All I do is work. All I do is travel and work all the time. What's yeah. on the line? My parents house in my house and you let them do this to you so you're him you're your parents good job look at him he's going down to freaking tubes and this is what you're doing how drunk are you now pretty face you're pretty face so you come to work face what kind of loser does that and how do you stand there and take it i shouldn't what I gotta find out is are you guys f***ing up or are you f***ing ups? If you're f***ing ups, you're gone! So, Winter, do you remember last night? A little bit of it. Jessica, you blew a point two one, almost three times the legal limit. Do you understand the liability that you face? You think you lost money now? Let her get in a car accident, you'll be in debt the rest of your life! It's negligence. So what's your deal? I think I just checked out. You better change that. So the problem of this bar is the fact that you know you can act any way you want. You guys need to sober up and party elsewhere. Dan, you need to hold them responsible for their actions. The minute you fire her, she'll get her act together real quick. You know that? It's called a landmark fire. Pick the worst one, fire them, and watch how the other ones realize, OK, they ain't screwing around now. The standards of cleanliness, standards of performance, standards of recipe, they're your standards, not theirs. They conform or they're gone. I've worked with a bunch of ex-athletes. And the problem with ex-athletes is you guys have handlers your whole life. Suddenly you're released, your career is over, the handlers are gone, and you don't have a clue what to do. Yeah. So if I don't teach you how to throw in the bar business, you're done. Electrical engineer Jason Taylor started construction on Nevada Brew Works. My name is Jason and I own Nevada Brew Works in downtown Las Vegas. We started construction on in January of 2020. At Nevada Brew Works, we're all about family. Um, my dad is the brewmaster here. Jason brought in his father-in-law, Ken, to be the brewmaster. And the two were excited to start building their family legacy. Don't jam it up, you're on camera now. I've been a home brewer for a long time. I enjoy the process of making a good product. We did borrow a little bit of money from Ken as a part of the conditions for our loan with the bank. They wanted the brewmaster to have a little bit of skin in the game. Ken stepped up to the plate. He also put in $50,000. So our total investment was about $250,000 in cash. But almost immediately, plans for a grand opening were crushed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Once they shut everything down, we stopped construction for about six weeks. We started having problems with our contractors showing up. So nine months after starting construction, Nevada Brew Works finally opened its doors in September 2020. Cheers. In a hurry to get up and running, Jason decided to manage the bar himself even though he had no prior hospitality experience. Um, there really wasn't very much training because they had been trying to open this before the pandemic started. So when they could open, they just wanted to open because I imagine they were losing money. So it was kind of like, hey, come on in, look at the computer, this is the layout of the bar. And then the next day it was, here's 40 people as a soft open, ready, go. But nobody really did any training in the kitchen is pretty much straightforward. While the beer was an instant hit, Jason sought to make a quick profit by featuring their liquor offering. The uh, Sally Ride Strawberry Rhubarb Smith. And brought in a local cocktail expert and mixologist to help sell drinks. My name is Danny Foxwell, and I'm the lead bartender and in charge of the cocktail program at Nevada Brewers. I'm a great bartender, the best. I've been bartending for about 20 years. 
uh, have run uh, multiple cocktail programs and created uh, various menus. But the results have been underwhelming. Did a lot of cocktails. It seemed like Holy it, for a brewery, it seemed like, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I have a beer coming for him. What can I get for you? Um, I'm going to try one of the cocktails. Um, what do you like? I like the Berry Pablo Blue is my favorite. It's oh, really? kind of like a whiskey sour, but we have our own berry syrup that we make in-house, so we add to that. I'll, I'll give that a try. Okay. Yeah. If so why don't we get uh, six wings and then uh, half pepperoni, half cheese? Yeah, easy. Thanks, cool. guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm looking at all these tickets coming up on this printer. What the hell are these tickets? Are these food tickets? Why are all these tickets out there? Can't he cook more than one thing at a time? Well, fine. Okay, here we go. He's going to pick up those five or six tickets. What are we doing here? Put the pizzas in. Can't you cook more than one thing at a time? He can't. Have love, Barry Blues. Thank you. Very well. Thank you. <clears throat> How's the drink? It's not that the cocktail's bad. It's a little off and it's sweet, too. Yeah. I don't know what balanced. they're doing. No. So the cocktail program doesn't fit the environment. So they have a very upscale mixology program in an incredibly casual industrial environment with pizza. Pizza lends itself to a more casual beverage presentation. The whole thing is disconnecting. It's not making any sense to me at all. I don't think he's even started making our pizza yet. So you can tell, he's, he's in the weeds, he's having trouble, he hasn't even started our pizzas. And you got owners that are like, you know, obviously they're, not doing well. Yeah. And wouldn't you pitch in to help out? Right. I want to go inside and see if Jason even knows what's going on. Are you okay with somebody waiting 25 minutes to get a pizza? That's a little long. Did you know they were waiting 25 no, I minutes? I didn't know they were waiting that long. But shouldn't you know? Yeah. Shouldn't you be looking Absolutely. at when the tickets come up and when the food goes out? Sure. Have you ever been in a restaurant business before? No, I have not. This is so, the first time I've owned a restaurant. So what did you do before this? Before this, I was an electrical engineer. Gotcha. So you have an engineering background. Yeah, so very okay. different from hospitality. By the way, the gentleman sitting at that table over there is Tony G. He's the, the, the number one pizza chef in the world, 12 oh. years running. Oh, no okay. kidding. Owns Pizza Rock downtown. Oh. A number of other places. Sitting next to him is Rob Floyd, one of the finest mixologists in the country. Okay, so let me go sit and talk with my experts. I'm going to eat some pizza, and I'll see you guys in a few okay. minutes. Sounds okay. good. So they got pizza that's... We still don't have a pizza here. Jason, can you grab a seat? Hey, gentlemen, how you doing? Hey, hey. good. We've been here a half hour. You still don't have a pizza. Still don't have a pizza, you know, and it's it's pretty fast pizza, right? That oven uh, cooks yeah. quick. It's an 800 degree oven. It usually cooks pretty fast. We're a little shorthanded tonight. Do you know how to do it? Do you know how to cook? No. If you knew how to do that, you'd be able to jump in tonight and be a hero. You'd save your customers. If they weren't with me, you wouldn't come back. Yeah. But, so I got to train you. I got to make you cook. You got to at least got to know how to make a pizza. At least know how to dress a plate. So what I'm worried is the business is running you, you're not running it. And I gotta get you to work on it. We gotta get these positions properly. We gotta get a pizza. We're over a half hour here for a pizza. How many of you would wait 45 minutes to get a pizza? You guys did. Do you like that? No. Would you come back with that happening? No. And you don't even know what's going on, Jason. Come on. Three minutes! Give me a damn pizza! 45 minutes, does that work? How many people are in this room? Is that acceptable, even with him alone? No, I would have expected it to be out by now. Okay, so? We've been busier than this. How long have you been making pizzas? About seven months. Seven months? Yep, never made dough before that. Do you know what he's doing? Does a little bit. Okay. Honestly, he, he, he has a little bit of skill. Even when you see him slapping, he does a Neapolitan slap. Who taught him that? We, we pretty much just went to YouTube. Never have I had an owner told me that they learned how to create their pizza on YouTube. How's our bar set up? They've done the best they can, but literally the dump sink is 15 feet away from the bar. Is there another POS system? It's over there. It's right there. here, but we can't send food on it. Okay, so I got to understand this. So you make the drink over here, you dump it over here. Correct. You come back here, serve it to the guest in theory. You come back here, <laughs> complete the transaction. And walk over here to do that. And then you come back here, <laughs> and in theory, then give the customer back. The receipt, correct. So we're taking four trips. Four trips, yep. 
we will fix this. Okay. So the setup behind the bar is definitely not functional at all. I'm glad that they came back there and they saw everything that we deal with. Jason, I've never seen somebody try so hard and miss so much. Where did you learn to design the bar on YouTube? <laughs> We're going to talk about a few things, but I want to start with branding. The largest beer brands in America are all suffering with reduced sales. And the reason why is because they're viewed as big stainless steel plants. And then you guys create a brand and you position it as industrial because you opened it ignorant. You looked on YouTube and came up with pizza and you put a million dollars of family money in a YouTube video and you wonder why you're failing. 2019, experienced bar owner Jim and his life partner Michael and their best friend Dan decided to buy Badlands Saloon in Las Vegas. Michael, Dan, and I took over Badlands uh, January of 2019. Badlands was here for about 30 years prior to that. It's one of the oldest gay bars in Las Vegas. It's here. It had location, it had parking, it's been there for 30 years, it had a clientele, it had all the things that we thought would be a good start for us. Jim and Michael intended to primarily just be investors, leaving Dan, a retired teacher, to run the day-to-day -day operations. You know, I retired from teaching, uh, but I was young enough to where I didn't want to totally retire. So I'm thinking, you know, I don't know anything about business. I don't know anything about running a bar. I do like to drink beer. And I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I thought this might be a great thing for me to do, you know, in early retirement. One thing great about face masks is it does help me in recon, that's for sure. What can I get for you two? Um, do you guys have a drink menu? No, we do not. Well, then what can you make? <laughs> I can make anything. Anything? Almost anything. I can't do mojitos. We do not have men. OK. What are your the, top sellers? Top sellers are usually like vodka drinks. Can you just make me something fun? You make me something fun? You know, just something balanced, something Something that you like to make for people. Okay, all right, got you. Vodka based. Vodka based, okay. Look at this place, it makes no sense. The center of that bar is the most valuable real estate in the entire bar. But what did they put in that real estate? Paper and office supplies. On this side of the bar, everything is glassware. There's no liquor display at all. That's unbelievably valuable real estate. They could be promoting specialty drinks. They're higher-end liquors. They're higher-end beers. They're using this for the exact wrong purpose. Uh, wait, so what, about, what? what am I having? Wow. It's just something I came up with. OK, but what am I having? <laughs> you are having, so it is cherry and gray vodka. I did a little bit of sweet and sour, soda, uh, lime, because you don't want too sweet. So we'll see. Cheers, honey. That tastes like 100% cough syrup. And it is a flavor not found in nature. Look at the beer. Mia, you got to order a draft beer. Look at what's going on at the draft beer counter. It's complete foam coming out. Oh my goodness. That means that those lines cannot be clean, are not clean. So you're adorable, but this is just not my jam. Okay. Um, can I just have a light beer on draft? Light beer draft? I can't wait to see this beer get pulled. All right. See how much beer he wastes. But he's attempting a 45 degree angle. Foam, foam, foam for days. Foam for days. He's like, Hosting a foam party here. With the drinks dripping down the sides of the glasses, these cheap plastic glasses, this is ridiculous. So there's no glass washers back. It's not really a bar. It's just a bunch of stuff thrown in a room. I'm not really sure I want to try this, but I'll take one for the team. Thank you, honey. You're very welcome. All right, I want to see how that tastes. I should have ordered bottle. It's warm, which is an indication of why there's so much foam, but those lines are not clean. Look at, there's still, every time they pour a beer, they're dumping in the methyl hydrogen. Jamia had a cocktail she couldn't drink it. She's had a beer she couldn't drink it. They lost money pouring that beer anyway. Obviously, these guys are rookies. You want to try something else again? Always. 
What's your favorite thing to make? I like old fashions. Old fashioned? Yeah. You sell a lot of those here? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just like making them. Uh, okay. Yeah. Can I try one? Of course. All right, an old fashioned. All right, let's see how this one goes. Okay, pouring over ice is an interesting choice. He's already watering down my cocktail, adding some simple syrup again over the ice. Good, nice little dose of bitters there, man. Yeah. Oh. I'm looking forward to seeing you pucker up when you drink that. So he poured the alcohol over the ice, then he stirred the hell out of it and bruised the drink completely. Chef, yes, this is already going to be a watered down bitters mess. There you are, my love. Thank you so much. Okay, here we go. Oh! It's Im nearly impossible to water down a spirit-driven drink to the point where you can't taste the spirit, and I do not get any of the bourbon or whiskey that he used in here. So let's just think about this. Old fashioned was wrong, the beer was wrong. There's not one thing that crossed this bar that's right. I've seen what I need to see, I'm going in. Who runs it day to day? I'm the one that's based in Las Vegas. I live in Las Vegas, so I'm here more than Jim and Michael. They live in California. So you're responsible for day to day, and then you back him up sometimes? He, that's yeah, sort of fair? they have the bar experience. I'm, I'm a retired teacher. Oh, so, okay. So yeah, I came into this with, you know, no experience. You know, guys, this place is important. <laughs> it's important to the history of Las Vegas. It's important to the community. You know and what I'm saying? Want, yes, and we want to we want to keep that. And you want as to perpetuate much as possible, it. Yes. So you want to make it strong. You want to make it vibrant and keep the legacy and going. Keep, yes. Okay. Let's go look at the bar. This is Mia Mastriani. Hi guys. Hi. Hi nice so to nice meet you. you. Hi, Jim. This is Dan. So I asked Mia to come in and have a couple of drinks. Well, first of all, what the hell is going on with this beer? It's foaming up. You have a dump bucket for foam. For every beer you're selling, you're dumping out about another half. No, so every not. beer you pour, you're losing money. Yeah. Where's the most valuable real estate behind this bar for marketing and merchandising? The back bar. Okay. Where are my liquors? Underneath, over to the side. Where the bartenders work, there's no alcohol in sight. Right. You guys are killing yourselves here. And you're the professional. You should know this. You're right. You're right, and that's where I I need to improve on that. And guys, this is a party bar, right? This yes. is a great gay party bar. You know, this should be an uplifting, a fun place. Obviously, we've got a lot to work on. I think I got to get a little bit out of retirement mode and back into the business. I have a lot to learn. Hi, this is John Taffer. Click here to subscribe to Paramount Network on YouTube for more Bar Rescue.